Good evening and welcome. This is News First, your number one news provider. I'm Shamir Rasulde. I'm Sonali Wanik Babage. We start off first with a look at the day's headlines. The end of an era. Mr. R. Raja Mahendran, chairman of the Capital Maharaja Group, passes away. Protests over teacher principal salary anomalies continue. Education Secretary offers an alternative to protesters. Health authorities warn of a significant rise in COVID-19 patients in the country. More protests against the soaring cost of living. Mr. R. Raja Mahendran, the chairman of the Capital Maharaja Group, passed away this morning. Mr. Raja Mahendran was 78 years at the time of his demise. He passed away while receiving treatment at a private hospital in Colombo. The final rites were observed at the Borella Cemetery this afternoon. Messages of condolence poured in both from home and around the world after the news of Mr. R. Raja Mahendran's passing broke. Prime Minister and one-time President Mahindra Rajapaksa issued his message of condolence today. In his message, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa noted that R. Raja Mahendran was a skilled entrepreneur whose network of businesses had contributed immensely towards the country's economy while supporting the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of people. The Prime Minister also pointed out that as the owner of the MTV MBC Media Network, Mr. Raja Mahendran stood for the people's right to information and was a pioneer in a new era of modernization in television and radio. The Prime Minister went on to say in his letter of condolence that he regarded R. Raja Mahendran as a brilliant businessman and social worker who went above and beyond simply reporting facts to the people and paved the way for people to better their lives through life-changing initiatives like the Gammadda movement. The Prime Minister offered his condolences to Mr. Raja Mahendran's wife, son Shashi Raja Mahendran, his daughters, relatives, friends and everyone at the Capital Maharaja Group, including the MTV MBC Media Network. Former President Maitripala Sirisena also issued a statement of condolence. In his message of condolence, the former president identified R. Raja Mahendran as a philanthropist who embodied the true qualities of humanity through his social movements that aimed to uplift entire communities in Sri Lanka. President Sirisena said that R. Raja Mahendran was an extraordinary businessman and a bold media mogul as well as a devout social worker. The former president concluded his message by wishing Mr. Raja Mahendran the supreme bliss of Nirvana. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa expressed his shock over the demise of Mr. Raja Mahendran, noting that he was a renowned son of Sri Lanka. The opposition leader pointed out that as the owner of a leading media network in the country, Mr. Raja Mahendran always stood for the truth, was unbiased and steered the media industry of the country towards new horizons, fearlessly overcoming all challenges before him, no matter the odds. Mr. Premadasa also noted that the journey that Mr. Raja Mahendran and his team have embarked on amidst a myriad of challenges and obstacles, whilst remaining unfaltering in his commitment to his vision and principles, is awe-inspiring. Noting the enormity of the challenges faced by Mr. Raja Mahendran and his media network as a result of fearlessly standing for the truth, Premadasa highlighted that no force has been able to subdue or silence Mr. Raja Mahendran and or the MTV MBC media network, underscoring Mr. Raja Mahendran's personification of leadership whilst being committed to the safety and well-being of his team. Former President of the Maldives and currently the Speaker of the Maldivian Parliament, Mohamed Nasheed, also issued a message of condolence via his Twitter account. President Nasheed wrote, He was a man who worked for harmony and who made 
a life out of sheer hard work. He was irrepressible, a phoenix that kept rising from the ashes. In a message on its official Twitter account, the Indian High Commission in Sri Lanka conveyed their condolences on the passing of Mr. Raja Mahendran, fondly recalling their long association with him. The Chinese Embassy in Sri Lanka also expressed their condolences over the passing of the chairman of the Capital Maharaja Group, Mr. R. Raja Mahendran. On his Twitter account, Justice Minister, President's Counsel, Mohammed Ali Sabri, conveyed his condolences to Mr. Raja Mahendran's family. Chief Opposition Whip, Attorney at Law MP Lakshman Kiriala, also issued an official message of condolence today, commemorating the immense service rendered to the people by Mr. Raja Mahendran as a gentleman who valued democracy, truth, and justice, and a media pioneer who consistently strove to foster national unity. In its condolence message today, the United National Party noted that the demise of an individual who was steadfastly committed to media freedom and bore great love for his country is an immeasurable loss to the nation. In a message on his Twitter account, former Sri Lanka cricket captain Sanat Jayasurya recalled Mr. Raja Mahendran's contribution to Sri Lanka cricket during his time as vice president of the board. Jai Surya noted Mr. Raja Mahendran's service in obtaining test status for Sri Lanka cricket while supporting many aspiring cricketers. The chief Sanganayaka of Japan, Venerable Banagala Upatis Satero, in his message of condolence, today praised Mr. Raja Mahendran's humanistic values which guided his decisions in his social life. Identifying Mr. Raja Mahendran as a pillar of his era, the Venerable Tero noted his steadfast commitment towards empowering the voiceless. Can we all A pillar of Sri Lanka cricket who played an instrumental role as vice president of the board when Sri Lanka secured test status, Mr. Raja Mahendran was also commemorated with a minute silence this evening at the R. Premadasa Stadium. The Sri Lankan and Indian cricket teams observed a minute silence before play got underway in the first T20 International in Colombo. Born on the 19th of May 1943, Mr. R. Raja Mahindran was an old boy of Royal College Colombo and joined his father at the Maharaj organization at the tender age of 16, along with his brother. At 21, he and his brother took on the reins of the group after the death of their father with little or no formal training in how to run a business. From that day to today, Mr. Raj Mahindran has built what is not only a world-renowned diverse conglomerate, but also an organization with a civic consciousness and a heart for the people. From setting up Sri Lanka's first BOI joint venture in the 1970s to the construction of Sri Lanka's largest hydroelectric power infrastructure to being the leadership behind Sri Lanka receiving ICC test status in cricket, which is a well-known secret, to making mobile telephony available to the average Sri Lankan by founding Dialogue GSM, to setting up Sri Lanka's largest media network that has differentiated itself through innovation, to directly overseeing News First Sri Lanka's news network that has never compromised on its commitment to the people to tell the truth, to changing the lives of millions of Sri Lankans through the Gamadha movement that he founded. He was not just a man, but a chapter in Sri Lanka's post-independence history. Many leaders from diverse spheres, including business and politics, both current and from the past, owe their careers to Mr. Raj Mahindran, who unselfishly supported them when no one else did. He supported people without expecting anything in return, and even when some turned against him, he did not stoop low. His heart for ordinary people, especially the downtrodden poor of Sri Lanka, was what made him an extraordinary leader. He forgot about profits and business objectives when it came to the people. He gave without expecting anything in return. 
and this included opportunity to those who worked for the organization and even to those who didn't. A Hindu himself, his contribution to Buddhism and all other religions was without comparison. He saw his role as a leader who brings together rather than one who tears apart. He was the embodiment of reconciliation as he built a company that welcomed people of all religions, ethnicities, cultures and creeds to work as one for the benefit of Sri Lanka. He was a patron of the arts, being a dedicated collector and supporter of the great masters and upcoming artists. His knowledge and appreciation of music and movies was legendary and this was seen in the innovative concepts that Sirasa and Shakti gave birth to over the decades. Mr. Rajamahendran refused to compromise on many things and perhaps most importantly, his integrity. He refused to be involved in unethical business practices and always took hard decisions when it came to national interest and personal profit. He faced insurmountable challenges in his life but overcame them all. The officers of the group were burnt in 1983. Sirusa was bombed in 2009. His life was constantly in danger and he lost good friends along the way to horrendous events. But he stood for what he believed in and never took a step back. Today, as he has been called to rest after a lifetime of fighting for a better country and a better tomorrow for us all, his legacy will live on in every life he has touched. He never gave public speeches and never sought publicity. He instead gave the pride of place to his team so that they would excel in all they did. Mr. Rajamahendran believed in a strong, independent Sri Lanka that bowed before no other nation in the world. He believed in the creation of a nation where our people were prosperous and lived happy lives. He hoped and prayed for clean political leaders who would always place the interests of the people ahead of their own interests. And he risked everything for what he believed in. This group will continue to dedicate itself to the vision of this great leader, a proud Sri Lankan who believed in the power of the truth and that the truth will ultimately win over all evil. This group, under the leadership of Managing Director Sashi Rajamahendran, will continue to innovate continue to build leaders, continue to stand by the truth and continue to play its role as it always has as a vital part of Sri Lanka's journey towards a better future. The management and staff of CMG, both past and present, joined hands in praying earnestly for eternal rest to our kind, wonderful and unparalleled leader, Mr. Raja Mahendran. Thank you, sir, for who you are to us and our country. Thank you for your unselfishness, for your love, for your determination. Thank you for believing in us. You will live on, sir. He had a habit of operating behind the scenes to facilitate any process and make it a reality. That was a unique feature of him. He mentored many employees with the love of a father. He inspired many through his vision, dedication and leadership. He even spearheaded the endeavor to enrich the lives of our citizens and the nation by revolutionizing the media industry. He considered it a prime purpose in his life. We were witnesses of it over the past few decades. In times of national strife, he mobilized all resources of his organization to stand by the people and assist them. Those were acts of selflessness. He always acted transparently. He was a guardian of Sri Lanka's territorial integrity, protecting it from foreign influence. He understood the pulse of the people. This is the caliber of leaders that we need. The people of the nation expect the Sirisa Media Network to expose the truth in its purest form. We do not expect the media to act according to the whims and fancies of those in power. The media should be genuine in its efforts to create awareness among the people on the affairs of the state. I identify Mr. Raj Mahindran as a person who upheld all those values. He was fearless. He stood for the truth. 
He was a patient man. He was composed and paid attention to everyone's opinion. He was fond of everyone and had great foresight and knowledge. He was not ostentatious. Every Sri Lankan was his family in his opinion, regardless of race or religion. He did not seek accolades or plaudits for himself, for his support of the people. He did not limit his vision to words. He put them into action. He had a unique characteristic of supporting people, regardless of their background. His legacy will live on in the hearts of the people. All those who worked with him are feeling deep sorrow today. This is evident in the atmosphere today as well. Condolences poured in from many quarters today over the demise of Mr. Rajendran Rajamahendran. The Singhala Ravaya Party and the Singhala Ravi Association wishes to convey its condolences over the demise of the chairman of the Capital Maharaja Group, including Sirisa, to the media network and his family members. Mr. Kili Maharaja is a person who did not expect popularity despite owning a media outlet and was also a very active figure in Sri Lanka's media and business sectors while serving as a linchpin in seeking justice. His sudden demise has dealt a blow to Sri Lanka's business and independent media sectors. As a public representative, I wish to express my condolences over the passing of this individual who took measures to fulfill the dreams of ordinary people through the Gammad initiative. May all of his hopes in samsara be achieved. He was a person who stood for media freedom. He was an outstanding personality who stood on behalf of that. Media freedom refers to the space that allows different views to be expressed than that of the government. There were instances in which they clashed with our government as well. But that highlights that he is a person who fought for media freedom. His demise is a loss not just to media but for democracy as well. May he rest in peace. Although his views and those of his media outlet were not on par with ours in some instances and went against us at times, the Sirasa Media Network carried out a great sacrifice by giving birth to a new media culture. I wish to express my condolences for the demise of Ms. Raja Mahendran, who rendered a yeoman service for media freedom in Sri Lanka. At a time when some people are guiding their media outlets for political advantages and business interests while the people don't have a voice, he guided his media institution when injustice took place in the country. He stood on the side of the people and criticized the Yahapalaniya government. His role remained unchanged even after this government came to power. Therefore, his demise will not only cause deep sorrow among the people, but it will also be a significant loss in rescuing this country from an undemocratic administration. Before I begin my remarks, I wish to convey my most profound grief and condolences to the family members and the Sirius Media Network over the sudden demise of the Capital Maharaja Group Chairman, Kili Raja Mahindran. Let us observe a minute of silence in memory of him. Sri Lanka recorded 1,190 new COVID-19 cases today. Official figures indicate that the country's total count of COVID-19 infections now stands at a staggering 296,040. 937 people recovered from the virus today, raising the total number of recoveries to 267,602. Meanwhile, 45 COVID-19 deaths were reported today. Health authorities state that there has been a substantial increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in Sri Lanka. According to the Ministry of Health, 68 people have been identified as having contracted the Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus. Deputy Director General of Health Services, Dr. Hemant Herat, noted, however, 
that the actual numbers are likely to be higher. The Delta variant, which was first detected in India, has a transmission rate that is 50% higher than the Alpha variant. This would mean that more people can be infected by the Delta variant compared to previous strains. What are the symptoms of the variant? A headache, sore throat and a runny nose are among the most common symptoms in a person who has contracted the Delta variant of COVID-19. Leading global virologist Professor Malik Piris has said that the detection of more cases with the Delta variant could have an impact on Sri Lanka. The Health Services Director General Dr. Asela Gunavardhana has said that the number of infections due to the Delta variant in the country has increased to 68. Most cases have been detected in the Colombo municipality limits. Accordingly, health authorities are urging people to take maximum precaution from the highly contagious Delta variant that is spreading rapidly. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka reported 52 COVID-19 deaths yesterday. The Department of Government Information said the deaths have been confirmed by the Director General of Health Services on Friday. Accordingly, Sri Lanka's COVID-19 death toll now stands at 4,054. We analyzed the deaths that have occurred during the last three weeks. Based on that, we learned that most deaths were of unvaccinated people. We observed a spike in cases in the last week. We sent teams of medical officers to hospitals that have seen a rise in infections to identify the type of patients and to obtain details on their vaccination status. It is the unvaccinated people who have been hospitalized. The virus has spread from them to their family members. People above the age of 60 should obtain the vaccine regardless of its brand. <laughs> At a time when everyone seems to be in slumber and when adequate measures are not being taken while PCR tests and rapid antigen tests are not being carried out, those who are not supportive of these measures must bear responsibility in the event of another wave. Why are we facing a situation in which they are bringing a wave under control and then giving up? It is the health ministry's responsibility to bring this under control. Between 1,300 and 1,500 cases are being detected daily at a time when the rate of conducting PCR tests across the country has been limited to 5,000. In June, between 15,000 and 20,000 PCR tests were carried out daily, but only around 1,500 or 2,000 infections were detected at that time. Taking this into account, we can observe that more COVID-19 infections are being detected in the country. We wish to state that vaccination alone is insufficient. Attention must be paid towards the travel restrictions as well. We know that the Health Ministry has not formulated a plan to ensure that there are sufficient intensive care facilities if there is a massive surge in cases. Meanwhile, COVID-19 vaccination camps were held in several districts today as well. Vaccines for the residents of Valley Pitya were administered at the Valley Hinda Purana Temple. Vaccines were administered for teachers in Siambalandur today. State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana has said that 412,111 vaccines were administered in the country yesterday, making it the highest number of vaccines to be administered in a single day. 300,000 people had received the Sinopharm jab yesterday. If you are expecting to receive the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, you will still have the immunity you received from the first dose of the jab. So far, we have identified that this vaccine has the potential to regenerate itself. We are about to receive 1.4 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine as a donation from Japan in the coming days. Taking a look at other local stories that we are following right here at News First, a media briefing was convened in Horna today by a trade union collective representing teachers and school principals. The protesters moved towards the Horna town in a motorcycle parade from Katukurunda demanding a solution to the salary anomalies of teachers and principals. A group of trade unions including the Ceylon Teachers Union were involved in the protest. The teachers and principals gathered at the Horana town and marched from the Horana clock tower. We don't believe that a cabinet paper will be submitted tomorrow to resolve the salary anomalies of teachers and principals. We are waiting to see the nature of the cabinet paper that would be presented. We wish to tell the education ministry and government officials to avoid playing tricks on us by submitting such proposals. Teachers and principals have united for a cause. They have become a headache to the government. That is why they arrested our fellow brothers and sisters. 
We are calling on the government, including Minister G. L. Pires, to resolve salary anomalies. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Southern Provincial Branch of the Ceylon Teachers Union convened a media briefing in Gaul today. They accused authorities of taking steps to offend teachers and principals. The government began slinging mud at teachers starting from Minister Kehli Rambukwala. They seem to have obtained the support of others to sling mud at them. We call on the government to avoid defaming teachers by using various people for this purpose. Otherwise, we can call this as a strategy of the government. The president or the education minister must declare that they don't bear responsibility over such remarks and that they are individual opinions. If you do not do that, that means you are supporting moves to offend teachers. Meanwhile, Education Secretary Professor Kapila Pereira has expressed the following views on resolving salary anomalies of teachers and principals. We will submit our proposal regarding this issue to the Cabinet tomorrow. The Minister made a promise to the teachers who staged a demonstration near the Presidential Secretariat last Friday. The promise was to discuss the matter further after the proposal is taken into consideration by the Cabinet tomorrow. As the Secretary of the Education Ministry, I am kindly requesting the teachers of this country to recommence online teaching, which they have been carrying out voluntarily regardless of the outcome of tomorrow's meeting. I am requesting all teachers, principals and the academic staff to consider the current situation of our country and start online teaching once more. If they don't agree to the solution, we can resolve it by holding discussions. <laughs> Protests continued in several parts of the country today as well, demanding solutions to a multitude of issues, including the rising cost of living. The protesters marched from the Samagijana Balvege's head office in Kurunagala to the Malavapitiya Junction. Samagijana Balvege's Mavathagama electorate organizer, parliamentarian J.C. Alavatuwala and parliamentarian Ashok Abe Singha were among those who were present. <laughs> Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa has accepted that there are many people who cannot consume at least three meals daily. Basil Rajapaksa must be ashamed because he has to admit that the people are unable to afford at least three meals, although his brothers have ruled this country for several years. He must be ashamed to face the reality. For 21 years, this country has been ruled by people linked to the current government. Today, we are at a point in which national assets are being sold. They brought forward a finance bill recently. Money laundering will take place if that bill is passed. The country will be ostracized by the international community by allowing the laundering of money belonging to drug racketeers and the funds that have been looted from the people. The Consumer Affairs Authority has introduced a maximum retail price for 18-litre cylinders that were introduced to the market recently. The prices for the cylinders, according to each district, are as follows. Kalambo and Gambaha, 1,150 rupees. Kalutara, 1,158 rupees. Nuwarelia, 1,229 rupees. And Gaul, 1,181 rupees. Meanwhile, the Consumer Affairs Authority has said that gas cylinders cannot be sold unless the weight in kilograms is mentioned in a clearly visible place on the cylinder. A full list on the prices of cylinders is available on our website www.newsfirst.lk. Fishermen of Kirinda staged a protest demanding to reduce the prices of fuel. The protest was organized by the All Island General Fisheries Federation near the Kirinda Harbour. A small scale fisherman will have to spend 40,000 rupees additionally as a result of the increased fuel prices. The fishermen took to the streets today as they want the rulers to understand their problems. Farmers staged a protest in several areas demanding a solution to the fertilizer shortage today as well.
tea cultivators in Kegol staged a demonstration demanding fertilizer required for their tea plantations. The amount of tea leaves we pluck from tea cultivations per hour has reduced from 300 and 350 kilograms to 150 kilograms. The price of a kilo of tea has reduced from 110 to 83 rupees. We request for fertilizer and also a standard purchasing price for tea leaves. The hands of tea pluckers become wounded after two days of plucking tea. Daily wage workers are finding it difficult to sell tea leaves and pay their rent. The ban on chemical fertilizer has struck a double whammy for the estate owners. Our tea harvest has dropped by three quarters. We have no means of surviving. The Sri Lanka Federation of Tea Smallholders organized a protest in Matra, demanding a solution to the fertilizer shortage. Have countries requested tea cultivated using organic fertilizer over the last 154 years? When was tea divided into varieties as organic and chemical at tea auctions? When has a foreign country rejected tea from our country, citing the variety of fertilizer that was used to cultivate it? This is the conspiracy carried out by the government. The government is intending to destroy the tea industry. <laughs> Police have recorded statements from 30 people to date of the death of the 16-year-old domestic who recently died of burn injuries. Around 30 statements have been obtained over this incident. This includes statements from the occupants of the parliamentarians' residence and those who visited it. Statements have also been recorded from other domestic workers who were employed at his residence. We have obtained details on the bank records of the person who acted as a broker. We have obtained details on an account which he had maintained at a bank in Agorapatana. We will continue to conduct investigations into the incident. Meanwhile, four suspects, including the wife of parliamentarian Rishad Badruddin, are currently in police custody. They are being questioned in line with an order issued by the Colombo Additional Magistrate to detain them for 48 hours. Meanwhile, the National Tea Cultivators Association staged a protest opposite the Uber Provincial Council demanding justice over Ishalini's death. A protest was also staged in the Mathale town demanding justice for the victim. With that, we go in for a short commercial break. Stay connected, stay with News First. We will be right back. Bellboy has got you covered. Download Bellboy today to get all your household appliance fixing and repairs done. Now available on Android and iOS. Sri Lanka's Milka Gihani, who was placed 28th overall in the artistic gymnastics event at the Tokyo Olympics today, was unable to find a place in the finals. Milka Gehani competed in the qualification round of the artistic gymnastics event at the ongoing Tokyo Olympics today. She recorded 45.79 points in subdivision 2 of the qualification round, but her performance was insufficient to earn her a spot in the finals of the event. 85 athletes competed in the preliminary rounds of the event. 24 of them have qualified for the finals while Milka finished 28th. Australia won swimming gold in the women's 4 into 100 meter freestyle relay at the Tokyo Olympics by clocking a world record time of 3 minutes and 29.69 seconds. Canada clinched silver while the US settled for the bronze. Two Sri Lankan athletes will compete at the Olympics tomorrow. Nuan Dharmavardhana is set to compete in the judo event under the 73 kilogram category. Meanwhile, badminton player Niluko Karnaratna will play his second first round match tomorrow. And that's a wrap from our News First News Studios for tonight. I'm Sonali Vanikabaduge. And I'm Shami Rasuldin. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place. Till then, take care and good night.